Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and it is a wonderful and exciting tutorial. We're trying to explore a very nice package called Memory Profiler, which is useful in case you want to do some simple profiling of your code, right? So there are several ways you can profile your code. You can profile the memory that it takes when it's executing a particular part of the code, or you can also check for the executing time of your code, right? So there are several tools. You can have the standard C profile that come, by the st come with the standard library. You also have the memory profiler, which is useful for profiling your memory, right, in RAM. Then you also have scaling, which is a combination of line profiler and then memory profiler with some other tools. Then you also have line profiler, which is specifically for the time it takes for a particular part of your code to be executed, right? So there are different types of profiling. We have the deterministic, which is going to monitor each statement, each function called each exception in your code. And you also have statistical, which is going to do a random sampling of your code and then profile it. So let's see how to work with the memory profiling aspect. So to work with it, just go with this particular package, pip install memory profiler to install some system. So I just copy this one here, go back to my terminal, then I can install it on my system, right? I'm using Python 3, so pip 3, right? Or yeah, to install it on the system. And for the install, so I just go straight away. Now let's go back and check it out. There's nothing here. I'm going to create a file called touch script.py and I'm going to open this particular file. So let's see. So this is the file here. There's nothing there, right? I want to create a simple function and I want to profile it. So I'm going to be importing my core package. It's going to be numpy. So import numpy as np, right? I'm going to create a function called example one. And this function is a simple function that this doesn't take in any argument. But I'm going to create a variable called d. I'm going to create some a random list and once, right? So once, then this function here, zero. A thousand, thousand again. If I if I'm running it and I go with ten thousand, it's going to fill up my RAM. So my system is going to crash, right? Okay. Perfect. So let's return this particular result D. So in case I want to profile how much memory, not just the time, but the memory, or the amount of memory which is being used, this particular function, then I use this particular option. So let's use a simple if main. Then I'm going to call this as my example one, here, right? Function call, I'm calling that particular function to be able to get the memory that it's using, not just the time it took to execute, but the memory. I just go with the I just go with this particular option. I'm going to import it from here. It's going to be so it's going to be I'm just going to import it so from memory profile. Voila. I'm going to import the function called profile. So this particular function I'm importing, I'm going to call it as a I'm going to call it as a decreter, so profile. So that is all I need, right? So in case I want to profile any function, I'm just going to use this particular profile function, right? And it's going to come as a decorator over my function here. Then I'll run it here, right? So let's see how to execute it to check for how much memory this particular function is taking. So I'll go back to my terminal, right? And I'm just going to run it with this option. So to run it, just go with Python 3 dash M. So dash M means I pick the model called memory profiler and then pick the file, right? Script dot file. So script dot pi. So if I run it, going to run that particular function here, right? This particular one and then profile it and give us the result. Voila. So as you can see, let me put it by side by side. So I'll put it side by side. Apologies for the noise you hear behind. Okay, right. I'm going to put the code side by side. Let's so see the result. Right. And you can see that this is so it's going to actually give us the result, right? So based on what you have, so the first line here, this this particular one is a line for the code, right? So the, the function starts at number seven, right? This is this particular profile here. That is a line number seven, line number seven. So this is this column is a line, right? The line of the code, which is the same thing. Number seven, number eight, number yeah, right, number nine, and then number ten, right? So seven, eight, nine, ten. Perfect. Then this one here, the memory usage is how much memory this particular function is taking. So the at profile the creator takes about 49.6 megabytes right in memory right very simple and then the same one moves on to the next function which is this particular function that's a name just a variable not take any memory then this particular function here so d this line here which is the same line here line 9 line 9 is taking this amount 812 megabytes right because it's very huge right it's taking that amount of money and then this increment is the difference the, the increment here is the difference between this and this right so the increment between uh, two one eight one two minus four nine 
is the is vascular increment right you are taking the previous one from the current one that is the basic understanding and the occurrence is how many times this particular function is run and you can see the final result so after it has returned this it is now zero right you subtract this one from this and it's zero that is a basic understanding so this minus this give us this this minus this give us this right that is how to profile the memory that a particular function is taking so let's add another function in case i want to plot this entire stuff right you don't want it you want it it's in the format of a plot you can just come back again to the same place and just go with my mprof right dot plot i just go straight away to run then you run it first so you, if i run it first let's check it out something I go with ls there's no file here only the code itself right so in case i want to get a plot of it i just go with mprof memory profile dot run then the script I'm going to run it and create a dat file right so this is going to create a dat file so running the process, running as a Python program, that's going to generate the same thing that we have done. It's going to generate a DAT file. If I go back and I check it out, you see that we have this particular DAT file with all the logs and everything there, right? Very cool, right? Very, very nice. Okay, perfect. Now, in case I want to plot this entire stuff, right? How do I plot it? So I can just go back again. And then to plot it, just go with this. Let's, let's clear off this. Clear off the entire stuff we have done. To plot this, this was the first one we ran. Because I want to plot the entire stuff. Is there anything again? And now plot it with this option. So plot. Just plot without giving it any argument. If I go with plot, it's going to plot it and give us a very nice plot that you can actually see. So it's taking some time for it to run. So this package is very powerful and useful. Voila. Just giving us a plot. So this is a plot of how it is used. So this is the memory usage and the time, right? So at the beginning of it, it was low, low, low. Then this place was a 42, right? This is a 49 coming from this particular place. This 49 here, which is here, right? Around this place. Then it rose up to 8,000 8, or 800, which is this place. Then it came down, right? That is a very nice way of plotting it. So in case you want to get a good name, you don't want this particular name, you want a better name, you can just, you can save it here. Just save the plot, save save it to whatever you want to save it so let's save it there right perfect so in case you don't want this particular one here you want to give your own name can you just go back again when you're creating the plot just go to dash t then you specify the particular name right the name that you want to give so let's say my plot so say my mem plot something like that if I run it like that, it's going to give us the result. Right? If I check it out, it now it has changed the name. So my mem plot, right? That is how to do that. Let's close it. So in case you want to give the title, you want to change the title, just specify dash t, then you get it there, right? Very nice. Okay. You can also do a flame chart in case you do you want. So let's do that flame chart. So to do a flame chart, you can just go back again, and then let's go with that that flame. It's going to give us a flame chart. This is another way. So just putting that, that flame, it's going to give us another plot, a similar plot, but using the flame format, right? Voila. So this is it, but it's not that clear. It's not that clear. But let's add some more stuff to it so that you see the difference. So I'm just going to go back to the same function that we had here. This thing, I'm going to duplicate this one. So let's copy this and duplicate this and call this one function number two, right? Example two, right? Perfect. And I'm going to change this one. Let's add some summation to it. So S is going to be the sum of this D. Then I'm going to return S. Let's give it a time to sleep. You can also give it a time to sleep so that it relax. But let's go with it like that. Then I'll just bring this particular thing here. Example two function. Perfect. So let's run it again. So I'll go back again. I'm going to run the entire stuff from scratch. So in the memory profiler, which is this one, let's see the difference. You have to make sure that you have saved it right then this is going to be the first example and this is going to be the second example right very simple you can see the difference so this is two so this one is you can see the difference here so this is 49 profile then it rolls up but for here when we are summing it summing goes way low it takes less memory right because it's using a different algorithm behind the scene that is how to do a plot now let's plot it out i'll just go back again the same thing we did can run it again run the memory prof again in case i want to create it it's going to generate a new plot then after that i can plot it back again so let's plot it out 
given us three because I want to plot it I'll just go back again and then I'll plot it right so let's plot it straight away so mprof plot I'm going to create a simple plot of the two different functions so you can actually I try the same thing on a on the streamlit app right see the difference the plot right very cool so these are the first example and this is the second one as you could see very simple so I can actually save this one again let's save it for two save right and then we can also come back again and do the flame plot so let's go back again right and I can just take off let's take off the title let us flame let's plot it out there's another way you can also work with it so that is how to do the flame plot the flame plot is no shame but that is the basic understanding perfect okay so that is how to work with it so it's, it's a very nice package that allows you to be able to do a lot of things so you can do a lot of things you can also check for the help to see all the various things you can do you can list them out you can remove you can rerun there are a lot of things you can do right but that is the basic understanding right very simple so to to recap it is very it's a very nice package that allows you to, be able to do a lot of things in case you also want to log these things into a file you can also specify that one in case i also want to give the precision of those things if i run this one here let's go back again and then run the other one right if i run this one consider it's giving us a precision right it's giving us a default option but you can specify the precision that you want this particular values to be right by going back again to this place then specify okay this is it i want to get a precision of it so i'll just pass in the precision if i just want let's say this is how many one two right i want to just give it maybe just two or something right if i run it this is the first one is two and this one is going to be the normal one so i'll just go back again run this code again now you see the difference right so there are lots of things you can do but this is just a basic overview right so this is just one decimal place but this is just two decimal places right you can actually specify the precision of how many decimal place that you want Right, using the precision option you can also log a uh, save the output into a file right by going with this option so let's try that one and get down to save the output I'm just going to go back to the same thing let's say fp for the file output then i'm going to open the file i'm going to call that let's say this is going to be like let's call it as let's say report memory log right oh dot log apologies for the noise you're hearing behind then i'm going to say okay right plus right keep on writing then i'm just going to do the same thing so this thing that i've done here i can put this one here let's put it on top of this sample two all right perfect that is all so we are just going to and i'm going to specify okay here i want you to put in the stream let's specify stream now specify the file that has been open this is another way of saving the output right so this is just to specify the precision this is just to use save the output so i'll save it go back again check it now there's nothing here right so the, if you check here there's no log file here but if i run the code again it's not going to save the output for us give us an error fb is not defined because i'm supposed to define it first right it's fp not fb so it's wrong that is why it's failed so let's go back again clear of the screen yeah let's run it again because i made a mistake my bad if i run it it's going to save everything and write the particular file fully that one day so the other one did not come only the second one only the first one came this did not come right because we are not logging it this one was the one that shown but this is the one that was saved right so if i go back again to the location then now we have our log file right which is here and if i can open a particular log file here it's going to save the result into that particular log file Right. the same result we would have seen here right very simple so there are a lot of things you can do with this wonderful package so thank you for watching so the basic idea is that you just have to import it here right from memory profiler import profile then just call that particular decorator on top of your function then when you are when you're done you just make sure that you run it in this particular option right and to run a file you just go back again and do this option right perfect that is how to work with it so thank you for watching and see you in the next session. Stay blessed. Bye.